In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, making clipping masks. So first of all, um, I am going to focus on Illustrator and InDesign. So this is one area where Illustrator and InDesign are kind of frustratingly different. There is also, of course, clipping paths in Photoshop. And that's where you use your pen tool to trace around the image of a photo that you want to be shown. Uh, it's a great way to cut out backgrounds if you have a uh, geometric or some, so any smooth, hard-edged object that doesn't have any, um, you know, out-of-focus parts or any soft or feathery edges. But that is a topic for another video, so I'm just going to stick to vectors. Uh, but this concept does extend to Photoshop. Okay, so I'm going to start in Illustrator. Illustrator being the program you want to use to, to create and edit vector images. So I have a couple of things here. Um, I've got this circle and I have these stripes. So I had those grouped, so I just ungroup them by hitting Shift Command G, which is also Object Ungroup. And these are just rectangles. I just duplicated uh, uh, this pair and I just shift option dragged over to make the whole line of them I aligned them. Uh, but it's important that I group them if I want to do um, my Pathfinder crop or make a clipping mask. So there's a, definitely a difference between a clipping mask and the crop Pathfinder, whereas if you watch the video about compound paths, the minus front and making a compound path were exactly the same. So there's definitely a difference this time. So in either case, I'm going to start by grouping these objects. So I'm going to select all of them with the uh, black arrow, the, the selection tool, and hit Command-G or go to Object Group. So this way, they'll always move as one, and in my Layers palette, they show up as a group. I'll put those back up there. And so what I want to happen is that I want a circle this size to have these stripes in it. And that's extremely hard to draw freehand, and this is the way to do it. So much like with the compound path where um, sort of the shape you're going to edit becomes on top, I'm going to put the circle on top, and I've got my group of stripes in the back. I'm going to select both. And I'm going to start by showing you the crop function in the Pathfinder palette. If you don't have the Pathfinder, you can go to the Window menu, and you can just come down here and check it, and it'll pop up for you. So under the Pathfinder, I'm going to come down to uh, this one right here. So it's the fourth one over under the Pathfinder's options. In CC 2017, uh, there have been a lot of problems with um, the little text tags popping up. So it's this one here with a little uh, where they overlap, they become the uh, light square. So I'm going to click that. And this pretty much does what it says it does. It crops these rectangles to the square shape. So I could... Uh, switch to my white arrow tool, which I did really quick by hitting the A key. And I could move them around, and you can see that they've now been cropped to that circle shape. So I'm going to undo that to go back. Uh, so this ha gives me my exact examples. If you're doing something like a logo, you'd probably want to crop it when you get to your final stages, because the logo needs to be as clean as possible. So that's the crop function. I'm going to show you that one more time. So I've got my uh, selection tool. I've got the circle that I'm going to crop to. I've grouped these stripes. This could also be a solid object. It's just more fun with stripes, to be honest. Um, and this could be any shape I want as well. So I'm going to select both and hit the crop function. And you can also see in the layers palette in this group, I now have these odd shaped sections. So my stripes are gone. They are cropped to this permanently, you know, the end. So I'm going to undo that because I want to show you the difference between 
cropping in the Pathfinder palette and doing a clipping mask. So a clipping mask is really a mask. It just hides things that you don't want it to see, but they're still there. So this is a great function of working digitally, is that we can have all this stuff, we can go back and get it easily, it's just hidden. So the crop function is more in Pathfinder is more of sort of like a final cleanup. You might actually want to start with a clipping mask unless you're doing sort of a complicated multi-layer thing. So again, I got my group of stripes and I have my front circle that I want to mask it to. I'm going to select both. Go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make, which is also Command 7 as a shortcut. So it looks exactly the same, right? Well, there's a very important difference. So over in my Layers palette, if I extend, now it's, and now it's called a clip group, and I can see that I have an ellipse, and then my group of stripes is still intact. So if I hide this ellipse, I'm going to be able to see the stripes again, because the ellipse is just a mask. It's no longer really a shape. It's just a mask. It's just saying, I'm only showing you this part and you don't need to see the rest. I could also go in here and I could hide some of the stripes. So I could get a gap in here because all of these objects are still their own pieces and they're all here. So hopefully you can see why the mask is a less destructive, bit more flexible way uh, to work with hiding pieces of vectors this way. So when you have the clipping mask, I could also uh, select only the ellipse. And I'm just going to use my arrow keys. I could move it down and over. So it's not stuck where you put it. Whereas if when I use the crop option, it was kind of, that's where it was. And it cropped those shapes. And that was it, unless I just immediately undid it. So you can see this is a bit more flexible. You still have access to all the shapes. You just have to be careful how you select it. So if you want to move the mask, you really got to get in here. I could also, if this was a uh, different shape, say something custom drawn, like these things I drew with a pen tool, I can come in here with my white arrow and change the shape of the mask, and it's going to be masked just to that shape. So if I want more of this weird kind of the lunch squished oval, I can just move the points in. Now you may have also seen when I made this clipping mask that the, under object clipping mask there was also release. And if I do that I get everything back and the, ma the mask pass kind of stays invisible so sometimes if you can't get a hold of it you gotta come over here and click on this side of the layers palette and get this little um, square so that you can actually get a hold of it. So I've got that back and I can go and put a color in it again because as a uh, clipping mask it doesn't need to have a color. It's just saying this is sh anything inside me is shown and anything outside of me is hidden. So that is the crop pathfinder and object clipping mask in Illustrator. So now let's hop over to InDesign. And things are a little bit different. So the easiest way I found to do this in InDesign is to actually use a function called paste into. So I have a few things here kind of already set up. Um, I've got this weird shape I drew. Because uh, as we know in design, we already have things to put things into. So we have these frame tools where we can say file place and put an image inside them. Let's just say I have something like these stripes. So I made these right here in InDesign. I'll just ungroup them so you can see. They're just lines. And I used my uh, distribute option to distribute their vertical centers so that they're evenly spaced. So I'm going to group them. And all I'm going to do is copy them. So you can write or control click on it and choose copy. You can do edit copy or you can do command C. So I'm going to click this little thing and say edit paste into. 
and it's going to do exactly that. It's going to paste those lines into that shape. Now I still get this target thing, even though this isn't a link. This tells me that I'm selecting the content and not the frame. So when I click on that, you can see I've got all those lines there. I can come out here and hold shift and I can resize them. And I can rotate anything I want. So that is how you get a clipping mask in InDesign. Um, on your vector shapes. So you may notice if you go to the object menu, there's something called clipping path. This is referring to what I mentioned at the beginning of the video where you, in Photoshop, you take the pen tool and draw around the part of the object that you want to show, and it's usually a way to get the background out. That's, that's what clipping path is to InDesign. That's the only thing that clipping is to InDesign. So just use paste into um, and you will be set. So there's some other things that we can do with paste into and it can be a pretty cool way to work with type. So the first thing you have to remember though with type is that you have to make it outline. So this here is live type which means I can highlight it, I can kern it, I can change the font, whatever. So I'm going to option drag a copy off to the side because if I want to edit the type later, if I get changes and I spelled it wrong or somebody else spelled it wrong and I pasted it in or I notice a kerning error, I've, always, I've got the original. So I'm going to go back to the original and do object, or sorry, type, create outlines. So this is going to transform my live type into a handful of compound paths or vector shapes. So I don't need to do anything else to this. So right now it's just thinking of these as vector shapes with a white fill and no stroke. So I still have these stripes on my clipboard because it was the last thing I copied. So with this still highlighted, so I just did type create outlines, I can do edit, paste into, and I'm gonna get red stripes on my white type. Now the other thing I could do is I could click the target to select this image because I want the image and not the box. So I'm going to copy that, Command C. I'm going to select my, uh, my type that's been made outlines and do Edit Paste Into. I'm going to move this to the side. And there is my type sort of masked into letters. So I can't, I'm going to hold the shift key and resize that. Kind of got a little bit off my screen there. Resize this down and I'm holding the shift key and the down arrow so I can adjust this to kind of exactly where I want it. So this can be a nice effect, you know, over solid colors. So you're sort of just masking it that way with a clipping path. So the paste into option in InDesign is the best way to do what may seem like clipping masks with your objects in InDesign. And in Illustrator we can use object clipping mask make or the pathfinder uh, crop option if we want to cut those shapes. Whereas the clipping mask or paste into in InDesign leaves them open for edits and releasing and moving those things around.